In the 1800s, Palaka was just a small town. At the beginning of the Civil War, Palaka only had about 600 residents. Before we had modern roads, rivers were the highways of our country, bringing goods, services, and people to and from the cities and towns. Palaka is on the St. Johns River. The St. Johns River was very important to transportation in Florida at that time, especially since the river runs north and south. The river is one of the few rivers in the world that flows north. It was a great way for shipping to travel up and down the state, from Jacksonville to Sanford. Palaka was also important because of its location on the St. Johns River. It occupied an area of the river that was fairly narrow. This made it a pretty good place to cross the river. Palaka literally means crossing over. Before the war, tourists from the north began to come to Palaka for the warm climate. It was on the way to several beautiful springs, including Silver Springs. For the outdoorsmen, there was fishing and hunting. For the naturalists, there were all these exotic plants and animals. Palaka became an important port on the St. Johns, the river allowing both people and goods to travel up and down the state. After the loss at Olusti, the Union headquarters in Hilton Head, South Carolina sent 3,000 troops to Jacksonville. This was to reinforce the garrison there. The Maple Leaf was a Union transport ship that was contracted to move all the soldiers' belongings to Jacksonville. Once in Jacksonville, the Maple Leaf was partially unloaded and sent on to Palaka with 87 cavalry men, horses, and supplies. In the haste to get the men and supplies to Palaka, the soldiers' belongings were left in the hold of the ship. In the early morning hours of April 1st, 1864, the river was calm and clear. The Maple Leaf was returning to Jacksonville from Palaka after offloading the cavalry and supplies. Suddenly, the ship was struck by a torpedo, what today we would call a mine. The mine's explosion ripped a big hole in the side of the Maple Leaf. The ship quickly sank in less than 30 feet of water off Mandarin Point, just south of Jacksonville. The water was so shallow that the top of the ship stayed above the water after it settled into the mud. The explosion of the mine killed four sailors who were stationed in the bow of the ship. All the rest of the passengers and crew survived. They used lifeboats to paddle on to Jacksonville. The Maple Leaf was sunk just a little over a month after the Battle of Alusty. The Maple Leaf was declared a total loss. The top of the ship was cut away to be clear of other ships navigating the river in 1889. The rest of the ship was left pretty much alone for the next 100 years until a dentist from Jacksonville, Dr. Keith Holland, started looking for it in the early 1980s. Dr. Holland found the wreck and over the next 10 years led expeditions to excavate the wreck and recover artifacts. Personal belongings of nearly 3,000 soldiers went down with the Maple Leaf. The shallow water and mud of the St. John's preserved these belongings. The artifacts recovered by Dr. Holland and his group St. John's Archaeological Expeditions gives us a real insight into the lives of these Union soldiers. Much of what we know about the daily lives of Civil War soldiers comes through studying these possessions. The wreck of the Maple Leaf gives us an important window into this time period. On October 12, 1994, the shipwreck site was designated a National Historic Landmark. If you're interested in learning more about the Maple Leaf and see some of the artifacts Dr. Holland and his group recovered, you can visit the Mandarin Museum and Historical Society at the Walter Jones Historic Park in Jacksonville.